book friends! Today I'm going to be reviewing the book One of the Good Ones by Maika Molit and Maritza Molit who are sisters. They wrote this book together. Can we just talk about this fabulous cover? I mean just look at that. Gorgeous. Three beautiful young black women on the cover. You don't even have to imagine what these characters look like. It's right there for you. I have to admit it's one of the reasons that I was initially drawn to this novel because I just find this cover gorgeous. So I have to admit that I've seen this book all over my social media and like I said the cover what was initially drew me in but then when I read the synopsis and I read one of the blurbs for the the novel that said this book is The Hate You Give meets Get Out which I thought was awesome because The Hate You Give is a really terrific novel and pretty good movie and The Hate and sorry Get Out is also a fantastic movie one of my favorites so I was like yeah this is gonna be awesome so I had to buy it. So let's get into the synopsis of this novel. There is a lot of storytelling in this novel, a lot of different POVs, a lot going on. But the main story is about a family grieving the loss of the middle child, the middle daughter, Kezi. Kezi is a 17 year old teenage girl who is an up and coming activist. She has a YouTube channel where she posts a lot of her stuff and she also attends a lot of different um, events where she speaks to, you know, systemic and institutionalized racism and police brutality, etc. She's also really intelligent and smart. I believe she's the valedictorian and the president of her high school, I believe. So she's really intelligent, really smart. So she ends up going to a rally, a protest, and she ends up getting arrested. She ends up dying in the prison or in the jail. They don't really say what happened to her in the beginning. They just say she was arrested and she ended up dying. So you know it has to do with something that happened in the jail. She becomes a martyr of sorts and her death enacts progressive change. But before she died, she had actually mapped out an adventure following the map on the Negro Motorist Green Book. She was going to take this journey throughout the summer and she's going to post it to her YouTube channel. But because she has passed, her sister Jenny and her younger sister Happy decide to take the journey for her. They want to commemorate her and so they take this journey for her with some of her friends um, and her girlfriend as well and they decide they're going to record it and post it on her YouTube channel. But there's also a twist in the novel that changes the course of the entire story. So like I just said, that sounds like a lot. There's a lot going on. <laughs> but there's also a lot of different POVs like I mentioned. So for majority of the novel, you're in Happy's POV, which is the younger sister. And you're also in Kezi's POV, who is the sister that has passed. But you're also in the POV of a character named Shakuria, who's relation to the larger story is a mystery until more closer to the end of the novel and so those are the three POVs that you're in but then you're also taken into the past where you are in the lives of Kezi's great-grandparents on both the maternal and paternal side during the time of the Jim Crow era and you kind of get to see what their lives were like living during segregation. And there's also some chapters that are letters from Kezi to her family. So there's a lot of different POVs, there's lots of different channels of communication, and there's lots of different timeline jumps. And so yes, there is a lot. The use of multiple points of views works in that it gives a well-rounded, thorough, and exhaustive exploration of, you know, the sisters, but also their family lineage. And it is a circular story in which everything is connected and everyone is connected and everything comes full circle in the end. But I will say that in my opinion, some of it just didn't really mesh well. So when it comes to the grandparent stories in particular, there were a lot of instances where I felt lost and confused. Like who was who? Who are these people to the sisters? Okay, they're their grandparents. 
um, or great grandparents, um, what side of the family are they on? And because you're taken to both sides of the family, you, there's just a lot of characters that you have to get to know. And there is a map at the back of the book. Sorry, there is a family tree at the back of the book. And I understand that there is a specific reason it's at the back and not the front, because I think that if they put it in the front, there would have been some spoilers. Um, so I get why it's at the back, but because it was at the back of the novel, you do get confused a little bit throughout, at least I did. And it wasn't until I finished reading the novel and got to see the tree line that I was like, oh, okay, the, that's who that was and that's how they're related and it made more sense then, but <laughs> you have to wait until you get to the end of the novel to really put that all together. And their chapters are kind of long and because they're kind of long, every time you went into the past, you were completely taken out of like Kezi's story and put into these other stories and that kind of dragged on and then you had to go back to Kezi's story and you're kind of like, okay, like these stories feel very disconnected. It just didn't mesh well together. And in my opinion, I felt like the past, like the stories that were told in the past were kind of unnecessary. Not the stories themselves, sorry, but the chapters. I feel like they could have weaved in those stories in the present through the POV of Kezi, through the POV of Happy, kind of relaying to the readers what they know about their grandparents' lives rather than actually taking us there because I feel like those chapters just felt misplaced in the larger story and kind of took me out of the more, you know, just took me out of the main story. I just really enjoyed being in Happy's perspective and Kezi's perspective a lot. And so whenever we were taken out of their perspective to go back into the past, it just felt like a hiccup in the longer story, in the larger story. What I did love about this story was the sisterhood. You know, Happy, who was the younger sister of Kezi, wasn't close to Kezi and she has a lot of guilt because of how her relationship was with her sister and because the final words that she said to her sister were not very nice and so working through her guilt and watching her grieve for her sister and for the relationship that they'll never have um, was probably my favorite part of the story and, you know, Happy's character herself, she is completely the opposite of Happy. Um, even before her sister's death, she was kind of, you know, miserable and mean and bratty. And she had this very, like, on my own attitude. But it was really interesting to see her grow and, and slowly change throughout the course of the novel. And, you know, Happy takes the journey with her older sister, Jenny, who she's also not close with. And so it was interesting to see them bond and grieve for, for the loss of their sister together. So this journey in the novel is like my favorite part of the entire story. You know, they take this journey together, the sisters and some of the friends, and it's just done so well. Um, and so they use the Negro Motorist Green Book to take this journey and they follow the map along this, you know, green book. The Negro Motorist Green Book is a map in a booklet form that was created by by and for black people back during, you know, the Jim Crow era so that black people who were traveling and driving, you know, within America would know where they were welcome, safe spaces for them to go to um, because it was not safe in America. So they needed this map so they knew where to go, where to get gas, where to, you know, find shelter, food, etc. And so if you don't know a lot about that, please Google it. It's interesting. It's really sad that that had to be a thing, but it is an important part of American history. It was really interesting to see this current generation take this map and visit these black historical sites. So there is a lot of black history in this novel as we journey with the sisters to these different landmarks in America it was told so well that whenever they visit a different place, I would Google it on my phone so that I was right there with them. And therefore I was like engrossed in the story and in the journey with them. I think the journey made to, can, uh, I think the journey made to commemorate, to commemorate, to commemorate. I think the journey made to, no. I think the journey made to commemorate Kezi was so important on so many different levels. We got to learn things we may not have known as readers. We got to take a journey through, you know, Black history. And it revealed important places and landmarks for Black people in the States. 
and it brought some level of healing and bonding for the sisters and her friends. So it was not just a physical journey, it was a mental journey, it was spiritual, it was soulful, um, and it was collective. And so I really enjoyed that. And I felt like I was on the journey with them. So brilliantly done, loved that part of the story. And although Kezi is not with them on this journey, she is still very much in the novel. You know, we get her POV and I have to say that I adored Kezi. I connected to her character. I saw myself in Kezi. I mean, she's much more bolder than I am, but I understand the feeling of obligation, of, you know, learning about your ancestors, teaching and preaching truth to power. Of course, I do that in my writing and she does that through her YouTube channel and actually, you know, being hands-on in person at these events. But we both have the same appetite to learn as much as we can about Black history and to continue to fight the powers that be and to speak truth to power, like I said, and this appetite to want to change the world. And so I just adored and connected to the character of Kezi. So let's get into the title of the novel, One of the Good Ones. One of the Good Ones is a problematic saying. Um, it's one that's perpetuated by the media whenever a black person is murdered by, you know, the police and their rap sheet is good and their rap sheet is full of successes and not crimes. So for example, Kezi is one of the good ones because, you know, she's intelligent, she's smart, she's a good student and she was going places, you know? So she's considered one of the good ones. But when black people who get shot and murdered by the police have a past that isn't all angelic, you know, they might have a criminal record or they might have smoked weed or, you know, they might have dropped out of school or struggled with mental illness. And so when they are murdered, their lives aren't valued and their deaths are seen as something that is almost deserved or bound to happen. And so there is a running commentary in the novel about how problematic this saying is and they constantly reject, you know, and challenge the idea that you should only value black people's lives only if X, Y, Z. The tagline for the novel reads, shouldn't being human be enough? And the answer is, of course, yes, it should. So I love the title of this novel and I love the commentary, but I do think it was layered on a little too thick at times. <laughs> Um, I wish I had started counting the amount of times it was used when I started seeing it being used in the novel. By the time I realized how many times they were actually saying the phrase, I wasn't going to go back and skim the pages <laughs> to read, uh, to count. But I will say they say it a lot. Like the exact phrase, one of the good ones, they say it a lot. Like probably 10 plus times. <laughs> and so, I mean, it would make a very good drinking game if you were to take a shot every time they use the phrase because you'd probably be hammered by at the end of this novel. <laughs> it came to a point where I was like, okay, we get it. Like, we get it. Like, you are explaining it so well, you don't need to say the phrase over and over again because it got very repetitive. Like, each of, each of the characters say it at least two times or three times. Just a lot. But... Regardless, by them laying it on really thick, nobody could, you know, say that they didn't understand what it meant. Any reader reading this is going to come out of this novel knowing exactly why this saying is problematic and exactly what it means. And in that way, they are learning a lot about, you know, microaggressions or racist uh, ideology, you know? They will fully understand why valuing Black lives based on this narrowed checklist is wrong 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 we should be valued just simply because we are human and that's that so on to the twist of the novel like i said i knew going into the story that there was going to be some kind of twist because it mentioned get out and so i knew it wasn't going to be typical it was going to have a twist and so reading the novel i was waiting for this twist <laughs> But I will say it takes a long time for the twist to happen and for everything to kind of be revealed and shifted. Like 80% of this novel is the journey that the sisters are taking. And only 20% of the novel 
is the twist being revealed and explained. So during like 80% of the novel, I kept waiting for this twist to happen. I guess I'm just impatient, I don't know, but I just kept being like, okay, when is it gonna happen? And you know, the closer we got to the end, I was like, okay, there's not much story left to tell. Like, is there a twist? Is there not a twist? I just kept waiting for it to happen. And so when we finally got to the twist and everything was revealed and explained, I was like, what? <laughs> and you know, all twists should make you be like, what? But I don't know if it should make you be like, what? And it was definitely the latter. <laughs> So the whole twist to me was just kind of like, mm, meh. Like, I don't know. I just honestly felt like I was reading two different stories, two completely different stories. It just felt very, very disconnected. And although I understood how the twist connected to the larger story and how it connected to the commentary on one of the good ones, I still felt like it just didn't connect to the larger story and that it was kind of overboard. I just think they could have taken aspects of the twist and weaved it into the larger story in a less dramatic way, but I can't really explain that any further without giving away spoilers. I will also say that I am in the minority in that a lot of reviewers that I've read have seemed to enjoy the twist. So just because I didn't particularly enjoy the twist doesn't mean you as readers will agree with me. So just be aware of that. This is just my minority opinion. <laughs> I also felt like because it was such a huge twist, such a dramatic twist, that it needed more time. And it was just too rushed and wrapped up too quickly. Um, I feel like the novel could have been at least 50 pages longer, maybe even 100 pages longer, just to really flesh it out. Or they could have shortened you know, the journey with the sisters to give us more time with the twist because it just felt like everything happened really quickly and it was wrapped up really quickly and it was just all a big rush. And if you're gonna have a twist as big as this one, I think it could have benefited from more time being in it, understanding it. But yet again, that's just my opinion about the twist. Um, I think the book would have benefited in my opinion without the big twist and maybe just put it in in different ways in the story or if they wanted to keep the twist just give us more time with it to digest it and flesh it out. But there are a lot of great things in this novel, themes that are explored brilliantly, racism, police brutality, you know, microaggressions, homophobia, religion, grief, resistance, and liberation. They are all explored really well throughout the novel. So I will say I'm really impressed with the Molit sisters and how much they gave us in this story. It was like a history lesson told through this beautiful journey of sisterhood and I really appreciated and enjoyed that. So even though there were, in my opinion, hiccups along the way, I still really enjoyed the journey. So on to my rating. I give this novel a three out of five. And I think I've already explained what I liked about the novel and what I struggled with throughout this novel, which has resulted in my rating. I love the journey. I love the sisterhood. I loved, you know, the commentary on racial injustice and microaggressions. I loved the history lessons, but I did struggle a bit with a bit of confusion and being jolted here and there. And, you know, the twist ending was kind of like, what? But like I said, I am in the minority in that regard. So <laughs> that is my take on this novel. I'm very curious to know what other people thought about this novel, in particular the twist ending. Um, so please comment below if you read this novel and do you have your own opinions you wanna share about how you felt about everything that was going on in this novel because like I said, there is a lot. So please comment below. I'd love to chat with you about this novel. What were your thoughts? What are your opinions? Let me know, let's chat. And if you enjoyed this video, why not like and subscribe? All right, that is all for today. Until next time, bye.